Hello, welcome to another episode of Film Seizure. I'm Jason Oliver. And I'm Jason Oliver. Oh, oh no. Wait. We're going to trick some people. Oh, we got, we got like, we got, we got tricksies. Doublies and shiplies. Yeah, we're and gonna, some sh- double crosses and triple crosses. Yes, yes, sir. And um, dastardly, nefarious actions. But I'm going to tell. By questionable uh, friends. Yep. And, and Matthew Lillard, my name is Jeff Harbuckle. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth, but I'm, everybody I'm, else. I'm Josh Harnett. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have for you today, um, probably, I don't know, we haven't done many movies like this. Um, this no, is a bit of a, this a, a, bit of a curveball from us. So yeah, this, 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 would've, this should have been our, our, our Valentine's Day episode. Oh, yeah, that would have made a lot of sense. We just don't think that far ahead. No, we don't. Um, this is 2004? Yep. Wicker Park. Wicker Park. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, probably a bunch of people are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Wicker Park, that Matthew Lillard, Josh Hartnett movie? I, I prefer to call it a Josh Hartnett vehicle. A vehicle, yes. Um, but actually, this is a movie that I think we both saw in the theater. I was working at a theater, so yeah, I saw it. And... Um, and liked it quite a bit. I liked it a bunch. Yeah, I did too. And then I kind of forgot it for a while. I didn't. I might have watched it once on home video and liked it swell then. But maybe <laughs> liked it swell. Yeah, I liked it swell. <laughs> but maybe it didn't have. Um, didn't have the punch that it originally yeah, had. Maybe or 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 I was in a different place. Yeah, the, the, that's one thing I definitely would want to talk about later. Yeah, is the, the place that each of us would have been in, in a very angsty time. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I was, I was less cynical the second time I saw it, and I'm a lot less cynical now. But are we really? But but not because really. I am. I am low. I, I think I think, of I think about maybe about relationships. I'm not as cynical. Oh, sure, 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 um, sure. That's sure, what I mean. Sure, I'm sure, cynical sure. as fuck. But, sure. but, but, <laughs> but maybe not as much about relationships. About relationships. Well, and, and sure, sure. Um, and, but but seeing it now again, prob- this is probably the third time I've seen it. I probably saw it when it came out. Probably saw it a couple years later, and now it's probably been. You know, easily ten years since I've seen this movie. Yeah, and I liked it a lot. Yeah, I liked it a lot just from a general experience. Yeah, a well written, well crafted movie. I think we and also, I mean, remember, we were in our mid twenties when mm-hmm. this movie came out. Exactly right. So um, we are kind of with Josh Hartnett through this. Yeah. You know, and uh, which is kind of important take because this is a romance movie that's really made for guys, yeah. not for not for the female crowd absolutely. like normal. Absolutely, absolutely. Fe- like you would have taken a date to see this movie because your date probably liked Josh Hartnett. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you probably uh, the trailers were one thing, and the more you would have learned about this, you would have understood. This is a, a very male centric movie. With stuff that both men and women should like, I would think. I mean, I don't know, but it's it's kind of it's kind of like a less misogynistic Neil LeBute movie, um, right? Blow my fucking brains out the, there. The, What's the, that? The guy who did the movie, um, oh god, uh, Shape of Things with Rachel Weisz, uh, and um. He did, uh, oh my gosh, he was a playwright. He did several movies in the early 2000s, late 90s. Did he do The Mummy with Rachel Weisz? No. Okay. He did do, however, the Wicker Man remake. (laughs) Oh my God. Uh, There was a movie that one of our friends really loved, In the Company Company of Men. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. He did that movie. So it feels like like a, like a, a less... Like women hating Neil Lebut movie. Yeah, it's a. Um, this is definitely a. And, and um, also like a, a, and also like a not so thriller ish Fatal Attraction, right? It, it yeah, rests, it's, it's a. It is an earnest version yes. of Fatal Attraction where it's not 
I'm going to make you love me or I will kill you. I'm just going to try to position myself to where you fall in love with me sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's manipulation. It's obsession. Sure, but it's, it's not but it's not a scary. Nobody's obsession. going to die. Right. Or be even necessarily physically harmed. It's going to fuck your, but it's your gonna, emotions it's gonna all up. But it's going to rip your heart right, right out of your body. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> No, I but yeah, I liked it though that it's more it's definitely more male centric, um, but it it doesn't play on the fears like a fatal attraction does, and it doesn't like attack women like right. like in the company of men does. This is a movie that still probably wouldn't be very appreciated by millennials. Uh, certainly, this was made specifically for the Gen X set, um, mm -hmm. which we fall right in at the end of yeah, uh, like the young Gen Xers. This is who that movie was and made it, and for, and it shit still works on me, man. Yeah, um, I I I like it all, all right down to the soundtrack. Yeah, the the score. Um, I mean, even even Matthew Lillard is is passable in this, which <laughs> well, is <laughs> he's he, the, the the kid's all right. I the mean, he's just right. been in some bad movies. Yeah, but he's very he's playing Matthew Lillard. He absolutely is. <laughs> but 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 uh, but a. He, you, if you He's, have, if Matthew Lillard is like shells on a knockboard, not a knockboard, on a chalkboard for you. It, he's going to be in this because he's sort of that same. I don't know, though. I mean, I think it's still I think it's pulled back a little bit. He, he Well, he has more of a um, vulnerability. Yes. In this, there which, which helps. It softens him. Right. Yeah. He, he remind you know, what's funny is for a little while there, I couldn't help. I, I would get Matthew Lillard and uh, Dak Shepard confused. <laughs> Nowadays, like Dak Shepard is like the the like the dude that's like made good. He's I'm so jealous of Dak Shepard. I know, I know why. He married my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> broke, they are, who they, broke my heart, uh, Kristen Bell. He they are it. adorable though. They are adorable. It's like <laughs> it's it's ugh, it's disgusting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna so, go all rose burn on them. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. think it's safe to say right out of the gate here, though. Let, let's let's be honest here. I'm gonna be a little, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be less harsh on Rose Byrne because 100 percent I would have dated her <laughs> as this character. Well, she's she is. I, I pity her in this movie. Right. I I am she, sad. She's the crazy one, by the I'm way. I'm sad for her. There's a lot of reason to be understanding of why. She is where she is yeah. in this movie. So I guess, okay, to really break this down, let's break this down by character. Okay. Okay, because this movie is not told linear, linearly, no. really. It's it's told, there, there are two different time frames that we're dealing with. Yes. There is the present and there is two years ago. Yes. If only they had the lake house. And, and there's kind of a third time frame too because it's a little weird with some of the flashbacks. They, they flash back to really earlier that day well sure well. but but the but the time the general time frames are stuff that happened that started two years ago and yeah. stuff that happened today yeah yeah okay um but you know if they only had the the lake house they would have had a mailbox to continue to communicate with one another through oh god yeah right right was that, was that nicholas sparks i think so if, well, i know if, it's keanu reeves and sandra Bullock. only nicholas sparks had written this there would have been rain instead of snow yeah Making out in the rain instead of making out at an airport. <laughs> uh, no, his his coincidences and, and misconnections are all very. I don't know. I guess they could call these contrived too in New Wicker Park. But, sure, but I mean, okay. So, uh, but there is a force at work here, right? So, uh, yes, um, not supernatural, just super crazy. And this is not even close to a Nicholas Sparks movie, like no. at all. Like at all. This is based on a French movie. It is. It and feels. It feels, feels so French. French. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking about themes of 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 of, of, of obsession, of of envy, of infatuation. Not just infatuation, but also loneliness. Like, but also like the very, 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 very heights of love, like instant. Yeah. So like the the kind of like the love drunkenness that that you know. That you that that people go through in early relationships, um, and but like one of the major themes is love at first sight. Yeah, so. but, it, but it also examines very much that concept of of when love at first sight works and when it doesn't. Right, 
and what that means for the person who thought she found love at first sight and doesn't right but she still feels it right that's the unrequited love yes yeah so you know it deals with a lot of frenchy french a lot stuff. Of frenchy stuff a little frenchy stuffs <laughs> um so it's okay so uh basic plot is um a guy who is a photographer in chicago uh works at a uh, like a like a camera shop yeah uh sees uh, you know, like his coworker working on a uh, a camera that isn't recording sound properly, or the sound's not coming through. Right, and uh, he sees this very pretty blonde girl on there. That is Lisa. Uh, the guy is uh, Matthew. Yes, and so Matthew well, notices. Not confusing at all. Matthew is Josh Harnett. Right, but Matthew, Matthew Lillard, Lillard plays. I forget who. Oh, um, um, Luke. Luke. Uh, so anyway, so uh, Matthew sees the girl outside and decides to follow her to kind of get, I don't know if it's to get up the nerve to talk to her or to find out more about her. Ends up finding out that she's a dancer. He follows her straight up. Straight up follows her. He straight her, up right. follows her to work. Right, which I said, you know, 15 years ago, that was more cool. You yeah. know than it is now, it but also fly at all. right. But also, it's the double standard of this is Josh Hartnett, not like Clint Howard. Yeah, you know, Clint Howard following somebody <laughs> is a horror movie. <laughs> Josh Hartnett following somebody is a Frenchy Frenchy, is a sexy French film. Is yeah. a French film. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, he ends up meeting her rather by accident because he's gone to see Luke. At the at the shoe shop that he owns, or well, she kind of I think turned the tables on him. Like, he fo- she, she followed, followed him a little him. bit. Yeah. yeah, she followed him because she was like, "Who's this guy following me?" Right. Yeah. So it confronts him at the shoe store. Yes, and yeah. but still, you know, it's playing like, it cool, playing it cool, and she, still gives him the date. He's Josh Harnett, <laughs> he's yeah. not Clint Howard, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which also means that's a that's by the way that's a wide difference. <laughs> Pretty much, if you are not within a 25 percentile of Josh Hartnett, you're on the Clint Howard side. I'm sorry, guys. You're not getting Diane Kruger. <laughs> sorry. Just don't even don't even try to follow her unless you want to spend the night in jail. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> um, so uh, they meet. They have this torrid love affair. And then all of a sudden she's gone. Yeah. No, nothing to say anything. I mean, he he gets a job offer to go to New York. He asks her to move in with him because he doesn't want to go to New York. He'd rather just stay there with her. Right. And she kind of freaks out a little bit, walks away from him. They're going to meet the next day. She's gone. Right. So uh, he comes back to town and uh, he thinks he finds her. Yeah, he thinks he sees her in a restaurant. And goes to her house, gets inside her house. Well, there's like a there's whole, a whole thing. there's a whole th- a, there's a there's whole a whole thing. trail of 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 clues that he follows, right? And to, to to her apartment, right? And there's an ex boyfriend who returns her key. He gets it, goes inside. He everything's hers. You know, it's like even the smell of the place. But when he goes there, and he's looking around, he um. Uh, what he thinks is her roommate comes home and it's this uh, um, very animated brunette as opposed to a blonde right? who is Rose Byrne. Mm-hmm. And she says, well, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm looking for Al- uh, for um, Lisa. Lisa. And she's like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm Lisa. Yeah. Who are you? Who are you? And he's like, oh, wow. Uh, I totally screwed this up. And then they fuck. Yeah. Which is totally creepy and weird. Oh, God, we can't even tell this plot because the whole thing is, is that this is a this is the plot is told through the characters' interactions. Right. And, and, it's it, it's not a way that you can just say. So basically, he's there's a web that's been spun now. Well, here's the thing: the audience right now in this movie, the audience looks at Rose Byrne and thinks, "Holy shit." Yeah, Josh Harnett is in this woman's apartment, a stranger's apartment. They're both strangers to each other. Um, and for Josh Harnett, that's true. But come to find out later, for Alex, the Rose Byrne character, 
she she has she, been friends she with is, with right. Lisa for this, years. This whole thing is 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 something that she is manipulating. Manipulating, right? It's the web that she spun to basically lead to this point. Yeah. So for two years, she's been waiting for this moment to have Josh Harnett, you know, Matthew, and in her apartment, and so she comes on very strong. And the audience and Josh Harnett are both kind of like, whoa, what is this about? But she... But Josh Harnett is... Kind of re- reels him in. Is Yeah, she sort of has a... Well, it's... I mean, he's also a guy. And he, well, and... He, and he's kind of going through some emotional shit. Yeah, and he's like... He's not happy in his relationship. Because like, the movie begins with him looking over rings to give to yeah. his current girlfriend, who is the sister of his boss. Right. Guys, don't do that. And like a major don't do that. corporation. Yeah, of don't some do that. Sort. And and he's he just kind of feels soulless. He's lost without Lisa. He doesn't like his job. He doesn't want to marry this woman. He doesn't love her. And now he thinks Lisa has popped up in his life, and that's thrown him for a loop. And all of that <clears throat> works positively for the Rose Burn Rose Byrne character because she can deal with that, with with the chemical imbalance that all of that causes it's interesting though because Because that's what she lives with a lot of it feels calculated but it's not like you come to find out that this happening where he sees thinks he sees and does really actually see lisa in this restaurant was happenstance and and alex just kind of goes with this she's like well i can work with this yeah (laughs) it, it almost kind of she was playing a longer game by dating um matthew lou or luke luke to get to Josh Harnett eventually, or to even find out where the hell he was because he, is, he, he was in New, New York. York. For two yeah. Years. And now he's, yeah. everyone's shown up again in the same place at the same time. And the whole thing is either a, a moment of opportunity or it's going to cause everything to crash and kind of and both a little of those bit of both. things happen. Yeah. yeah. Both of those things happen. So, all right. So we've talked a little bit about Matthew. He's, he was a photographer. And he's very typically, like I said, this is a movie made for Gen Xers because he, he was just kind of doing his thing, doing what he wanted to do, not what he had to do to pay the bills. Because remember, when he gets offered the job to to go to New York, he said, well, it'll help me pay my bills. Right. You know, but he was he was one. I mean, which was a marketing company like he was going to he was like doing marketing design or something. Yeah, I don't know. But he was, you know, he was perfectly happy just kind of being kind of a slacker he even dresses like a slacker mm-hmm. of the of the time you know yep. the early 2000s yep with his big stocking cap and you know it's it was a thing guys it was a thing it was fine <laughs> it was fine anybody who's younger who doesn't understand me it's fine it's fine um so anyway um he only takes the job ultimately because he feels like lisa's left him without any understanding of whatever happened to her right Lisa is a dancer Mm -hmm. who was presented with a very similar opportunity almost exactly the same time that that Matthew was, Mm -hmm. and she ends up in Europe. Yeah. Now, you find this out later, and you find out that... um, You find find out the reason that she had to leave and wasn't able to meet Matthew in the park was because she had... She basically had to get on a plane in two hours. Right. And, and she trusted she, her friend. She trusted her friend, Alex, Alex. <laughs> to pass this information on. Because she didn't want to leave a voicemail saying that, yes, of course, she's going to move in with him. Yes, of course, she loves him. Yes, of course, she's going. she's got to go do this thing, but she'll be back. Right. In a couple of months, there's and a, they'll be happily ever after. You're right, and there's there's a lot of moments you're probably hearing this and saying, "Well, what, that doesn't fucking make any sense." Well, you're right; it doesn't make any sense. Um, it, it it should be very easy for them to connect on the phone, and we ask these same questions. But but the movie does a pretty good job of resolving all of those little plot holes. Right. So you're you're basically placed in the middle of the world of Josh Hartnett. You are having to deal. With him not understanding things. Yeah. Because naturally, you're not understanding. Why can't she just pick up a phone? She she knows where he works. She knows where he lives. Why can't she just go and do these things? Uh, so you find out that it's like, you know, uh, ba- basically she wouldn't have gone to Europe. But she was an understudy for somebody who broke their leg. Right. Uh, in rehearsal or whatever. So now she's gone to go do, I think it was cabaret. Cabaret, yeah. Yeah. So anyway... Which is funny because she's a German actress and that takes place in Germany. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
so um so so that's where we get to rose being the or rose burn uh alex, alex yeah being the one who has now manipulated things she is given um a key to matthew's place and a note which to her it's like i mean she she messed up all of her pants when she got these things because this was her opportunity now because you find out throughout the course that as just as uh matthew was about to find out about lisa she had seen him yeah and was in love with him from afar this is and me, didn't know how to talk to this him. is to me like the most heartbreaking thing in the movie and the way yeah. they, the way they actually shoot this is really well done as well and a, a, a ba- basically how it how it happens is um uh, Alex has a camera a video camera and she had seen um um Matthew in the park yes um and had was kind of smitten by him you know just just you know love at first sight is that moment for her and she follows him to the video store where he works and maybe she buys the camera then, or maybe she doesn't. Um, I think she did. Did she buy the camera? I think then? she did. But he worked in the back. Like he, I yeah. think he developed film. Yeah. Because he was he was seen at the beginning in the back. And she wanted to talk to him, but she didn't. But and she, she did because she's camera. very shy. But she wants to be an actress, which that that actually plays mm-hmm. later into. So this whole she thing. she brings the camera home and she's filming her friend who who is um, Diane Kruger. Diane Kruger. What's her character's name? Lisa. Lisa, yeah. Uh, you didn't remember oh, Lisa's God, name? Know, That's no. the most important name yeah, yeah, in, I know. in film history in 2004. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, so she's – and then she realized that the audio doesn't work. So she – and she's kind of telling Lisa about – I know a guy. Or guy, I met a guy. And, and she, she talks about how she's kind of like – Kind of just, love at first sight. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And Lisa's like – you're like really supportive. She's like, you got to do something now, yeah. or you're gonna miss them because the so, good ones go fast. So the camera doesn't work, and so she takes it to the the video store to get it fixed, and um and then she's going to pick it up later, and she's walking with Lisa, and, and that's when she tells him, it's and, like, you got to go do something about right. This. So she's gonna go pick up the camera, and at that moment, she sees Josh Harnett looking at the video, and it's a video of Lisa. No, it's not that. <laughs> He's looking through the camera, spots Lisa, and starts watching her through the camera oh is that right that's what yeah because he then he, saw the, because he the, looks at the camera the he looks first well he saw the footage first but then he saw her actually right outside okay. the window okay. as he was playing around with the camera right, right and then that's what she sees him yeah. doing and realizing that he's falling because in she's love turning, with her because she turns around and sees oh this is live yeah. you know this is what's going on right now yeah and and it's like this moment of just such sadness like because you could just, Rose burn just, oh, she's devastating in this in this part. Right, she's she, she's everything is on her face. Yeah, uh, no no surprise that she is the the big star of the of the of the group of people in this movie. Honestly, yeah. I mean yeah. she she is working to this day uh, pretty hard. I mean she's she's got a lot of roles these days. Um, so, it, but right. it's that irony, right? That she ended up bringing Waiting them too long. together, and she waited too long. <clears throat> and then, what does Josh Harnett do? Uh, oh, so he runs out after Lisa, put practically pushing. Yeah. No, not practically. He does. He pushes, he pushes her out, r- into pushes Alex out of the way into a stack of VHS. Stack, oh, that's so embarrassing. Yeah. That's so sad. And and then follows Lisa. And then there's the start to of the movie. Her job, right? Right. And then um, they, you know, actually fall in love right something that was unrequited for rose like she could have had that same thing and it's, you know, the, and, and, and it didn't work out because because of really her own she she by happenstance put them together put them together which is funny because i had said that the type of guy that josh hartnett is in this movie he doesn't find her unattractive. No. Later, he has sex with her two right. years later. Yeah, she's not much look, looking much different. But it makes you wonder if, if she had If she said had something. actually said something, he probably wouldn't have even noticed. Right. I mean, he would have been friends with Lisa. Probably would have thought she's very attractive, but may have tried to set her up with Matthew Lillard. Who knows? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it, it's one of those things that it's like he's a good enough guy where you don't believe he would have just, you know, straight armed her right into you know 
it's, right into a fucking pile of tapes if he knew who she was. But then there's also the other side of it is was it meant to be? Was it supposed to be? Is it fate, right? Is it sure. love at first sight? You know, would, right. would he have done the same thing if he saw her under different circumstances? Right. Um, but there's also the double standard, too, of the fact that, you know, him stalking her and following her to her job works. works. And when she did it, it it well brought. the way that she does it throughout the rest of the movie and again weaving that web for him to get caught in is it goes one step further yeah well i kind of have a theory about that i i think that in her mind she feels like she's responsible for bringing them together so she has autonomy over that relationship like she can break them up and she does and she does that's what she, she her, whole, yes. her whole focus so is. so what ends up happening is she gets the note and the key to Matthew's place to deliver the letter explaining why Lisa is going to be gone for a little bit and and that I'll call you when I get to Europe. We'll talk. Well, it's going to be great. Everything's going to be fine. And I think it even says in there, of course, I'll move in with you. Of course, I love you. Yeah, all of that stuff. Right. And so she goes in and she notices that Lisa's called him like nine times trying to explain what's going on. And this and is she, her moment. This is her moment to do the right thing and she could, or she, to do the shitty thing. She sets the, the, the note on on the table next to the phone and she and the phone rings. And it's Lisa saying, you know, I'm here in the I'm here in France, you know, I'm in the hotel room. Look, I'm not running away from you. Just call. You know, I'll explain everything. Everything's great. You know, I right. you know, I'll talk to you later. And um you know, here's their moment. You can even see it in your face where it's like, I can just let it be and go find somebody else. Or she picks up the note and then she deletes all the messages. Yep. And now, you could say, well, it's like, how many times is she going to call? Right. And um, they try to close this loop. They do. Though. And I think they I think they do a well enough job. Yeah, because she it, it, it's it's implied that after a couple of days, she's gotten no response. Um, so she's talking to Alex and Alex says, well, you know, I, I was kind of holding this back. Nah. I wasn't sure how to tell you this. He wasn't expecting me and caught him with I caught him with woman. another woman in bed. Yeah. And then that basically stops the phone calls so that she doesn't have to keep going over there and deleting, deleting messages them. or right. whatever she's doing. They don't really like it doesn't. Yeah. You only see it's her a, go into, but <clears throat> it's, it is very well mirrored. To it's, what Josh Hartnett's doing. It's also one the of those. It's also one of those movies that couldn't take place today. Like this couldn't no. happen today with the proliferation of cell phones and messaging, messaging and, and everything. It just would be impossible for this no. to happen. Um, but you know, because they make a point to say it's like, oh, we've given you a brand new cell phone right. for your trip right. to China. And which, I don't even think he'd activated it yet. Like, well, he never uses it in the movie. He does eventually. Does he? Mm-hmm. he eventually did use it, but. Um, but no, that would have been a thing. In she would have had his number. Yeah. No. But in 2004, that would have been a thing where he might have had to have gotten a brand new phone to yeah. go to China because of, of oh, sure. travel, uh, yeah. you know, uh, roaming. So that's something that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it, it is a movie of its time. Mm-hmm. It is a little bit more classical in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. It, the movie that this was based off of was eight years before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there would have been even fewer opportunities to have, you know, really found a way to communicate, you know, there would have, there wouldn't have even been email. So in 2004, you could say, well, she should have just emailed, you You know, know who the two leads were in, uh, the original, uh, Josh Hartnett (laughs) and Diane Kruger, it was Vincent Cassell. (laughs) Okay. And Monica Bellucci. Oh, I bet that's a pretty good watch. I bet it is too. Huh. Huh. Vincent Cassell. Now, Vincent Cassell is one of those guys who could go on either side of the Josh Harnett or Clint, Clint Howard. Howard spectrum because <laughs> he is a spooky dude. We've talked about him before. Where I said I don't understand how Vincent Cassell has never played a Bond villain before. Right. Like he is a he's a kind of a creepy looking guy. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, the the only guy that you don't need much out of is matthew lillard poor guy just gets railroaded oh, yeah he's, because he's actually at the start of the movie he is dating alex yeah he's a road killing this movie he man. is man oh it's so sad and alex uh i think you're right i think the only reason why she started dating him 
was to um to actually have a way to be close to uh to Matthew. Yes. To to Josh Hart. Yes. So, you know, because like she's hot and cold with him mm-hmm. constantly and mm-hmm. and poor Matthew Lillard's trying to save face and you know, say that you know, they're having all these hot dates and whatnot. Right. And it's it's just not it's like, dude, come on, man. Yeah. It's come, not happening. It's not it's not it's not there, man. Yeah. It's like Yeah. You know. It's a bummer. You know, <laughs> it is a bummer. It's a bummer. It, this movie is kind of a bummer. It, it's it, yeah, really, I mean, is. it really is. It's it's it, it it does have a happy ending. It it does, and I it almost but feels like it. Everybody shouldn't. else has to be broken. Oh yeah. In order for the for these two people to get together, again. even right before the <laughs> happy ending. Oh my god. <laughs> there is a mother moment of heartbreak for uh, Matthew's fiance. Which, yeah. So Matthew is. Uh, he, they're not officially engaged yet because he hasn't gotten the ring, but they've talked about because that's how things are when you get older. You don't, you're not spontaneous anymore. You right. talk about this shit, for, <laughs> especially if you're in corporate America. You talk about this stuff. You try to figure out the logistics of it all, and you know, <laughs> then you go buy the ring, and then you go, you know, you make the reservations at the at the most perfect place to do your thing. And everybody knows it's going to happen, but maybe you get on TV or something. And you do it. <laughs> but still, um, you know that that's how that's how grown ups live. <laughs> I hate to tell you that. That's how grown ups live. It's yeah, it is. It is. It is. That's the so. If you were about, you know, if you're in your mid twenties and you're hearing this and you're thinking about watching this movie, it ain't like this movie, guys. <laughs> it's. It is. This life is is terrible. Well, it, it's a it's a horror show from the, from the moment you open your eyes to the moment you die. Well, it's, it's a it, fucking horror show. It, it, again, it, all right. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but I, I, hey, I think I think play I, some French music. I think I'm having Finn. that moment where with with where Matt, Matthew Lillard is in the restaurant. Yeah. And uh, Alex and Matthew are are you yep. arguing and he's like what the fuck's going on and his brain breaks yeah i think i just had that happen <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to play a little bit of french like squeeze box oh my god that's so know, and then just yeah and then you know yeah <laughs> or love stinks Get, bring some jay giles band in here <laughs> or love hurts love. oh nazareth yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man um but yeah, this is a movie. It broke your brain. It broke my brain. It's one of those movies that people will watch maybe and just rediscover and will maybe think of it as a product of its time because sure. of some of the technology involved and the the miscommunications that probably couldn't happen today. Well, in the mid aughts, <laughs> it's like a lot of horror movies, right? Sort yeah. of like they they're a product of their times now because you could never cell phones ma- I was just, would have solved everything. I was just thinking about a lot this of this thrillers. Morning. Cell yeah. phones would have solved everything. I w- I just thought about this this morning. Um, you can never really remake a new Friday the Thirteenth, right? The reason why it's not that because fans will just shit on it instantly, which yeah, by the way, we <laughs> but the thing is, though, they uh, those movies, those slasher movies, are a product of their time, right? Like the the eighties was just cranking out whatever it takes to get the same thing up there to cash in, and all of the sequels to Friday the Thirteenth were pretty much that. The only two you could ever remake are one and two, but you can't do one because it doesn't have Jason in it. You can't do two without including lots of elements of one. Right. So what are you going to do? You're going to do another sequel? Well, okay, you could do another sequel, but the, the sensibilities have changed. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be the same type of thing. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you can do something different because you can have a plot there. Sure. Uh, but but with Friday the 13th, you don't really have a plot. Now, during the mid-aughts, uh, we weren't really sure how big cell phones were going to be at that time. I mean, everybody had just gotten their first cell phone probably in 2001 or two. Yeah. I got my first one in 2002. And so, you know, it's like I still had a landline. Right. I still had limitations on how much I could use my cell phone. Yeah. People still call you at work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think. Or people would still call your friend 
to get a hold of you. Yeah. Hey, is you know, is Jason over there? Yeah. 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 You know, get that motherfucker on Simpler, the phone. Simpler times, really. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have Facebook. Well, communication had to be a lot more deliberate. Right. And I think the once communication became so easy, so standard, that it also became more of like a crutch. Yeah. So, well, it also, so it I, don't, also I don't like talking on the phone anymore. I maybe, I maybe talk on the phone to my friends and family and my wife a grand total of a few hours a year, if that. Yeah, there are, I mean, the I only time. I don't like it. I don't like talking right. on the phone. Most of the time, if I talk to a friend on, on the phone, uh, it's it's an emergency situation. Like, we need to figure something out right now, or I'm on the way to something right now. You right. Know? Or, uh, or I don't want to fucking text this out. Where are you? I'm going to call you. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I have friends that, aside from communicating with them face-to-face, I've only ever texted them. Right. You know, I mean, that's just not, it's yeah. just not a pick up the phone and call unless there's a problem, you right. know? Yeah. Uh, anyway. So, so yeah, and in a lot of ways, like we're more connected, but we're not, I, I feel, mm. I feel that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. Because you also get a lot of people's shitty opinions that you can't help but to be punched with constantly yeah. when you go to your community, to your social media but it's or just whatever. About that sort of sense of, it's not easy to to keep in touch so you have to be more intentional right you know before the, the information age if you will were there mistakes made in this movie where they're like passing notes and stuff yes sure you know at some point like lisa knew where matthew was matthew knew where lisa was they could have communicated in some way shape or form like she didn't have to entrust a friend to deliver a message because right. what happens if if the friend's like, oh shit, it fell into the street and there was a bunch of snow and like mushy snow <laughs> and melted, right? You know, and it's like, well shit, now you know now you got to deal with the time zone difference. You got to deal with you know you got to call them at a time where you know it's you know not super late for you and not like at an inconvenient super early time for them. You know, it's but still. You you could say that a, that a plot hole in this is is that Lisa didn't try hard enough to explain what was going on, or I don't shouldn't know. just shouldn't feel, have sent a note feel, with a friend. I feel like in movie land that, that it makes perfect sense. Mm. I mean, it was explained at least. It was sure. given an explanation. It, oh it, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't unacknowledged. So to me, that makes it fine. We're moving on, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's a plot hole. In, but it I is. Mean, but it is a movie. We were sitting that here would in the not real world. Exist because oh, yeah. in in our world today, a simple beep, beep, text beep, 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 would have been like, beep, beep. "I got to get on a plane in two hours. We'll Come talk. see me. Fuck me in the bathroom of Chicago O'Hare. I, 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 I would love to move in with you. Yeah, yeah. Boom. No movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's kind of the fact, right? So you have to kind of get over a little bit of that. Well, you just got. This is why I said put yourself for, in the time and place for us to to be more attracted to this movie because right. we we do know that world without cell phones. Right. We do know that world without Facebook. And, right. You know, and so forth. But yeah. Um. Yeah, because the other thing that would have happened, like if this movie was made today, the first thing that would have happened was she would have gone to work. Because you do see her perspective, because at first you see him ask her to move in, then she's like, uh, I'm late to class, and then she like books out of there. But you do see it from a different perspective, where you see her smile and excited about it. You know, the first thing that would have happened in the movie made today, she would have just changed her Facebook status. Right. You know. Or something, yeah. Yeah, something. Um, it would be an interesting experiment to try to write this movie in 2019. Ooh, we should do that. I think it would be interesting, yeah, like just that. to like, kind of sketch out how the plot would work using today's technology, and to put these people in the same situation and the same manipulation. But the only but other, today. the only thing I can think of is you would have to figure out a way. Now there's there's a couple of ways that you could do this, right? <laughs> One, you could have it uh, like a like a like a cell phone mishap, right? Yeah, sure. Or that would have you'd have to be a cell phone mishap. Or you would make you would have to make and but, I hate this. But even then, you almost have to make Josh Hartnett a neckbeard who doesn't believe in social media. Right, it would be something uh, or, dumb like that. Yeah, because you could it, uh, social oh, media. Oh, it'd be so quirky. Yeah, well, maybe, but maybe, yeah, maybe. Uh, no, I mean, it. No, I don't know if it could work. 
I know the number one thing you couldn't do is you couldn't have these people following each other. No. Well, that might be the only thing that does work. <laughs> right. In the end. Yeah. In, 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 in the, in the, the Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think there there would have to be some sort of manufactured misunderstanding, like something that happens beyond just her disappearing. Oh, you know that what? That makes them think that that makes him think that she is angry with him. She starts or showing up on him. Facebook with a bunch of pictures with some goofball with her, right? Right. And he's like, "Oh, she's probably seeing some other guy, some some dude right. over so, in so, some Euro trash." So because fucker. he's proud or just scared, he doesn't he just, want to have a conversation and he right. ghosts her. He ghosts her. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Got it. Why are you ghosting me? Why are you ghosting me? Right. Yeah. And we then, just and figured then, it and out, maybe folks. She, and maybe Hollywood, she thinks the us. same thing, so they ghost each other. But un- unnecessarily. But then it's like then he starts seeing well, no, but then what do you do with Rose Byrne's character? Because Facebook, her picture would be all over the place, oh, too. Oh, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. She would almost have to be a, a, an incidental, just a neighbor. Yeah. she could. Or, 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 no, 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 because she's crazy. She would have a different name on her Facebook profile than yeah. who she really is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the... Uh, or she people would, do that or shit. Or she would also, yeah, she would also, like, cleanse her profile. Yeah. So, so that she, because she knows that they could see that they're friends, so she's gonna like, yeah, she could do it. Hmm. She would definitely have a different name. It would be like some nickname. Yeah. Oh yeah. If, yeah. Oh yeah. She'd have a fake profile. Oh well, no, no. I'm not talking about a fake profile. I'm I'm saying that she would, she would just have a different name on her profile, so you don't actually know her full name. So she would. She would have not even Lisa would know, her real name. Uh, possibly. Oh okay. All right. Now that makes her a little bit more sinister, but you can play with that. That's a little more can... premeditated. Well, but but that's that's moving more into fatal attraction territory. No, well, maybe not because what you she could be like that from the beginning because you do learn her backstory about how she wants to be an actress and she's really mousy and she's really right. shy and it's like it's 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 Lisa that tells her that when you're basically when you're a performer because she knows she's a dancer you have to like commit everything right so it's like so she kind of learns that from lisa mm-hmm. um so you know she could be this kind of weird uncomfortable with her own self thing and also she'd probably be she'd probably be bisexual too um, I was kind of getting that vibe. Yeah. From, from, yeah, I really wanted to see that. Yeah, scene. really yeah, wanted to were, see. I really were, wanted really, to see yeah. that. But there was a definite <laughs> vibe there from yeah. Alex that maybe she um, she was at least infatuated with her. I think she even want, even as a friend, she was <clears throat> infatuated with her. I think what's sad is that she she I think wanted to be more like Lisa, but she couldn't be and idolized her in some ways, but she couldn't be. She wanted, but that's who the person that. Alex wanted to be and then to see Lisa then fall in love with Matthew was that just an extra piling on yeah that just she couldn't handle because she knew that if she were more like Lisa that that could be her life that would have been her it life. would have been her life because again I think Josh Hartnett was a good enough dude to where if she would have just said something and you know she if she put on a nice top combed her hair <laughs> didn't wear that little beret thing and walked into the camera shop and said, hey, would you like to go for a cup of coffee? He would have been like, uh, sure. Yeah, he would have. Because he's he was he was set up as a good dude. Yeah. Like, yes, he has to break a heart at the end of this movie, mm-hmm. but he's not a bad dude. He was lost. He was lost. He, he's, he was lost. He was and lost he, for and two he was, years. He was, he was ultimately prey for a couple of predators. Yep. Somebody who wanted uh, the hot shot at her brother's office on her arm and for the crazy person who had no way of dealing with her losing him right other than to contrive things yeah yeah so this movie you know it's it's again i think we probably have proven that it's difficult to talk about it is because the way the plot is laid out and the way everything is revealed is very incremental um it's very i think i think really well crafted really well edited movie I think it holds up quite I a bit. I think it does, yeah. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I, oh, there was one other character we haven't talked about. Oh yeah, Wicker Park. Oh sure. Chicago itself is a character in this movie, yeah, even though even it though is most not, of it is filmed in Montreal. Which, well, yeah, because we don't see hardly any, uh, any like 
uh, uh, like shots of Chicago. Yeah. Right. Um, but I'm they're, not even uh, sure that's actually Wicker Park, which is funny. Probably not. Yeah. But, um, but like, um, well, it's it, it, it basically it's it's a couple of it's like it's a couple of of uh, of um, park benches, park benches, yeah. In a hot in dog a, stand. In a hot dog stand. <laughs> Wicker Park is a town, I'm guessing. Well, it's a little... Or it's, it's a, a neighborhood. It's a burg or it's whatever. It's a neighborhood, yeah. yeah and, it's, and there is a park in Wicker Park, which is what it's named for. But it's, sure. a, it's a pretty thriving but like, but like Schiller Park, you know, again, I mentioned Schiller Park because I'm well... I'm, I know my way around Schiller Park after all the years of going to the conventions up there in, uh, in uh, Rosemont. But um, I've never seen quote unquote Schiller Park. I've seen the town oh, of sure. Schiller Park. I've seen the town of um well Lincoln Park is a is got a probably park also. But mm, yeah. um but you know it's like I've seen the towns of Rosemont and Schiller Park. You know, and I know that Chicago is kind of very East Coast in the sense that it's a lot of little towns that make up a big metropolitan area. But but anyway, without seeing a whole lot of actual like shots of the Sears Tower or of I mean the easiest thing to do when you do a, 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 a movie in Chicago is to either show the Sears Tower or go on a date to a Cubs game you know right right how many times have you seen that in a fucking movie yeah. that takes place in Chicago <laughs> get on the L you know or I, whatever none of that ha- is here but but Chicago is a character because it's where everybody is it's kind of like how Cheers is a character, right? Everybody congregates there. I think that if I had one big criticism of this movie, it's that Chicago isn't on display as enough, or 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 um or as prominent as a character. Because yeah. I think of the fact that they they didn't shoot in Chicago, that it's not really Wicker Park. Wicker Park is it feels almost tacked on, sure, because it's the place where they meet. Right, it's their place, but it's still not Wicker Park. It at that all kind of bugged me. Um, knowing Wicker Park pretty well now, no, I didn't know it when I first saw this movie. That all kind of feels like nah. like like Chicago isn't really the star. It's, no. Everybody always mentions um, uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. How that's oh that, yeah, that's a movie that made a city a character. Sure, right? Savannah, Georgia. Yep. Um, so you kind of, I would kind of expect watching Wicker Park to be really making the the city a character, and I don't think it did. No, I think it was good at, at showing you how miserable Chicago is in winter time. Yeah, it, it did do a good job. It of is that. a it is a cold movie. Yeah, I was. Get, I mean, it's very chilly. It's very chilly. It's like I'm looking at that and I'm like, God, I'm glad it's not snowing today. Yeah. You and know? it's interesting that that makes a lot of sense too because I think in the yeah, the whole movie it takes place in the winter, pretty much. Yeah, everybody is cold as fuck in this movie. Yep, because it's winter at one stage, mm-hmm. and two years later, it's still winter. It's, it's still like winter. basically Perpetual exactly winter. two years. Yep, and um, you know, it's like I I understand, uh, you know, like Josh Hartnett's like you know, you can you can tell he never really got over Lisa. Right. You know, it's like uh, we've all been there. You know, we've all been there where. We just can't quite get over that one person or that one bad situation that exploded when it didn't have to, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I think, I, I, again, you know, thinking about our age at the time that this came out and how um, either we were slackers or we were, you know, we were angsty, uh you know, we were we were in at an age where we should have been better off than we were. You know, it's like th- this movie kind of speaks to you a little bit because mm-hmm. because it, it kind of talks about all the things you can have. You know, and yeah, you know, and, and yeah. I don't um, know. some other few th- a few other things I I like I really like the the music in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I like the soundtrack a lot. Um, it's it's pretty solid 2004 indie rock you know but but sort of the the more like the cold play the death cap for q oh yeah you know? oh but yeah. you've got some Mazzy star in there it's it's kind of a shoegaze soundtrack in a lot of ways you've got a little bit of iceland in there and the band mum um the stereophonics i think have a song in there um it's it's a really good eclectic 
uh, soundtrack, but then you also, on top of that, have a Cliff Martinez score, which is absolutely it's beautiful. And, but it, it's also very subtle yeah, in this movie. It is. It is. And, and, it, and, and I think and that's something that in, he does pretty well. Because if I remember correctly, it's it's pretty subtle in because um, he did the uh, the Walter Mitty soundtrack. I think mm-hmm. we talked about while we were watching, it. and uh, I always felt that was really subtle too. And he does a good job. W- scoring a film that has a a deliberate soundtrack yeah because he has a way to kind of weave his score between the Mm. the songs that that makes it almost feel seamless yeah like there's moments where i was like wait is this the score or is this a song from the soundtrack right right he does that really well with drive Um, yep yeah so it's almost like wait you know is it what is what is written by cliff and what isn't right right um he's yeah he's just a great great composer um, and then the director. Yeah, I was going to ask you because you you know this director a little bit better than I do. Um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce his Scottish name, but it's his name is Paul McGuigan. Do you McGuigan? pronounce? Do you pronounce the G? The second I don't know. G, McGuigan. Um, McGuigan. Yeah, I do know him a little bit. Uh, he made a couple movies in the late '90s, early 2000s that I liked a lot. Um, the first one was Acid House. It was his first film. Never um, <laughs> Kind of crazy uh, British flick. Um, okay. Adaptation of an Irvin Welsh uh, uh, collection of short stories or something. It's kind of a bonkers movie. Um, then he made Gangster Number 1, which uh, had Paul Bettany, yeah. which was a cool little gangster flick. Mal- Malcolm McDowell was in that. David Thewlis, just Saffron Burroughs. It's, it's a cool little flick. Uh, very stylish. Um, good flick. And then the movie that I really loved by him was The Reckoning, which is a period uh, mystery drama with, again, Paul Bettany and Willem hmm. Dafoe is in this. Vincent Cassell. Oh. Name, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, it was the new Brian Cox movie. Yeah, he was. Oh, in he it. was in that too. Yeah. Huh? And uh, Tom Hardy is in it. Like 2004 in, was the year of, oh, hey, the new Brian Cox movie. Yeah. That's an inside joke, by yeah. the way, guys. <laughs> the Reckoning is is awesome. It's it's set in medieval England. Um, Just cool. You say Tom Hardy was also in it? Tom Hardy's also in it, yeah. It's it's awesome. That's uh, Post Nemesis? Uh, It was 2003. Yep. Post Nemesis. And then he made Wicker Park. And then he made another movie with Josh Harnett, which I think is also pretty good, Lucky Number Slevin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, I kind of lost him. Uh, he did that movie Push, which wasn't very good. That sort of superhero thing mm. with Chris Evans and Co- Dakota Fanning. Mm. It wasn't very good. And um, and he did a couple episodes of Sherlock TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, he's done a lot of Sherlock episodes. Four. Is he is, is he a particular uh, is he uh, particularly uh, does he have like particular things he does with movies or Not really? He's sort of just a he's good, just he, a solid he, he, director. Yeah, just a solid director. Crafts good story. Um, really good at kind of piecing together complex plots. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is kind of why I think he does so well with the Sherlock stuff. Sure. Sure. And um, I guess he did a couple episodes of Luke Cage. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, but kind of a cool guy. When I see his name pop up from time to time, I'm like, oh, I like him. And I had forgotten that he directed this movie, but it makes sense. Um, It's the way it's crafted. I mean, if you watch something like The Reckoning, you'd be like, yeah. yeah." Well, this is – so what's funny, I was telling you about this too as we were starting the movie, that um, this is also a time where I had up to this point and for maybe a couple of years after this too – I had uh, accidentally seen all of Josh Hartnett's movies in one way, shape, or another. <laughs> and, of course, you know, Halloween H2O, I saw that in the theater. And most oh, of them, God, actually, yeah. I ended up seeing in the theater, do you know what? I've seen a lot of his movies yeah, in the I know, theater. Right? So, like, you know, there was that. There was, uh, what was the one with the Harrison Ford, Hollywood Homicide? Was that? Oh, I forgot was? about yeah. that. I saw that. That's hilarious. That that's, I guess it's not hilarious, but it had one hilarious scene where Josh Hartnett is acting on stage he wanted to be an actor in that yeah and he was doing he was doing streetcar named desire and he was the whole stella scene and it's just terrible yeah <laughs> yeah i remember that um of course sin city he was yeah. in sin city yep, yep. um he kind of if i'm not mistaken he opens and closes that movie because yeah. he, he plays an assassin um and it's it's the ending is kind of cool where like one of the characters we care the most about ends up in an elevator with him it's like oh fuck uh, but anyway, um, yeah, 
Yeah, that's right. Wow, I mean, oh, because he was uh, Halloween H two O was basically his debut. Yeah, that's wild. Um, and then the faculty that was great. Faculty, yeah. The Verge of Suicide is phenomenal. Yep, that movie's that's great. That's a good movie. Um, yeah, so it's like I just kind of happened upon like basically all of his movies up to this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he was making some pretty big hits. I mean, isn't Pearl Harbor? That was gar- garbage. Well, I saw it though. I, I mean, did too. Yeah, um, he did the Othello um, update. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, in two thousand one, he did Black Hawk Down. Yeah, it was a big movie. That was a huge movie. Yep, that was an Academy Award nominated movie. Yep. Um. So yeah. So it's just kind of funny. It's like you know, just kind of he. I mean, I think that he kind of. I think he was kind of a character who was kind of contemporary of our age and of our, you know, mm-hmm. and it was, he was making movies that a, a wide range of things that just kind of appealed to people like us, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. He only ever did a kind of like one sort of, I don't even know if you call it a boner comedy, but he did that 40 Days, 40 Nights movie. I love that fucking movie. And it's kind of a good movie, yeah. Yeah, it, that was during a time in the mid-aughts where, uh, the early and mid-aughts, where comedies were rediscovering some of the boner comedy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was But it was played more to less of a uh, uh, cool guy bagging ditzy chicks but like they were all uh the, the the chicks weren't so ditzy anymore you know like there was there was a there was a time where there was it was at least giving a little bit of agency right there was almost equal agency right or at least that emergence was starting to happen right. yeah yeah for sure yeah uh, now sometimes that didn't work out so well who was the woman in that oh um i always want to say it was like rachel weiss but it's it no she's too old um yeah Shannon Sossamon? Yes. Yes. Uh yeah. She was in a few. Oh, she things. was in Rules of Attraction. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, she was. Oh, she was Knight's Tale. Yeah. Yep. She was big for a minute. What yep. happened to her? I don't know. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yep. That's a gooder. Huh, yeah, she disappeared. Huh. Um, yeah, no, the uh yeah, so you know, he was just in he was just in some good flicks, you know, and that's yeah. He's I mean, a good actor. Of, I yeah, mean, he really is. He's still he's still in stuff to this day. He pops up. He was on um, uh, all three seasons of Penny Dreadful, which is probably one of the best characters on that show. Um, yeah, he's good. I yeah. liked him. I was kind of I always kind of got him conflated at one point with Wes Bentley. Oh uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, but um, but, but I they, always they felt both like seemed Wes to have Bentley... like the same sort of trajectories. Where, yeah, like, but I always thought Wes Bentley was the. Um, was the scarier one. I agree with that. He has sure. a look of a killer. Uh-huh. It's Whereas, like steely blue eyes. Yeah, it's like, he will kill you, but Josh Hartnett may save you. Yeah. You know, he may... Because his unibrow will, will, <laughs> will comfort you. Yeah, that was a time when unibrows were kind of in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or at least there, was, there wasn't much, like, uh, metrosexual... Uh, right, uh, pr- uh, pruning. Uh, pruning going yeah. on. Yeah. Like, th- there was a, a world before dude wipes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got anything else for wicker park i don't i don't right. i liked it uh you, sh- you should all watch it yeah um yeah it's it's worth a watch i mean but keep in mind this was a different era you know so if you're some 13 year old turd yeah. no there's no cell phones back then no, asshole. no one's got no one that's 13 is gonna like this movie well that's on them it's their S- fault some old soul who likes old movies one day maybe we'll we'll watch this again and and be like oh man that was a weird time when all this could have been solved by one text but i like that movie because it reminds me of a different era i guarantee goddamn to you that at some point the themes are what really matter yes yes and the story yes the the sometimes the details are important but sometimes the details as they pertain to us and our sensibilities and what the things we have today. I mean, hell, probably almost every Hitchcock movie wouldn't make sense today, but they're still awesome fucking movies. Right. You got to remember what it's like yeah. at that time. Yeah. And that's kind of part of the fun. It's like it's right. like a history yes. at the same time. It's uh it's it's history of pop culture. Yep. You know, and um yeah. 
I guarantee to you, at some point in the next few years, <laughs> some dickwad's going to get on the internet, right? Probably, probably set himself up a little YouTube channel, and he's going to try to um, uh, riff on Wicker Park from a perspective of what it's like in 2020 as opposed to 2004, right? Uh-huh. And there's going to be a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments <laughs> of how much they want to suck his dick. <laughs> you guarantee you guarantee goddamn tea I this. I guarantee goddamn tea this because <laughs> because people don't understand what's what's comedy anymore. Like they just they just want to riff on things right. without understanding that the best things they want date movie four. <laughs> the the thing is is here's the thing. I don't I don't there are plenty of people who riff on stuff, you know, like riff tracks, cinema snob, you know, I was watching some, but there's also a, a certain amount of love that people have for the stuff they're riffing on. Even if they don't like the exact thing they're talking about. Right. I do that every week. I watch a shitty movie and I type 3000 words on it. Right. Right. And sometimes I really like the movie I'm, I'm riffing on, but it shows like, you know, but it's not just making fun of something saying, Oh, you should just text the person. You have a cell phone, dummy. That's not a joke. Right, it's not a joke. You're just being a little fucking turd. <laughs> yes. Fuck you, younger generation. Oh. Well, you're putting everything on us, so we're gonna, I'm going to put some stuff on you. I still blame the baby boomers. Fuck them. Fuck them. Not all of them. Most of them. No, yeah, sure. But now we're 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 moving into that where everybody <laughs> below us is saying, "Fuck those guys." Fuck those guys. So I'm I'm, I'm dishing it back a little bit. All right, dish it. Yeah. You know, for snappers. Yep. So all right, all right. So that pretty much does it. Um, yeah, I didn't check this movie out. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. I think I might have it, it on DVD. Hey, so you know what? To look. If you got a if you got if you got a lady, and you're gonna come, and she can come over. And you're gonna cook dinner for her or something, or you're gonna go out to dinner. And it's like, hey, let's just. Netflix and chill or whatever, or DVD and hang out, whatever, whatever that's called. Uh huh. Slip this movie in. <laughs> Just slip it in. Just slip it in. Just slip it right Trust in. Trust me. Yeah. Slip it right slip in. Slip it right in. It'll be fine. That's be the good. other thing, too. If you watch the trailer for this movie. Um, it's not the movie it, that's being sold. It's not the sold. movie that's being sold. Yeah. This was really cut like a thriller that the trailers were. I remember, I remember certain moments in the movie. I was like, "Oh, that was in the trailer. That was in the trailer." Because I saw the trailer a shit ton. Yep. And I, and it was definitely aiming for like the erotic thriller yep. angle. And it is not this movie at all. No, this is a romance movie. This yeah. is a drama. This is not a thriller. Uh, there's uh, never at one point does even the soundtrack make it theme seem like no. Rose Byrne is going to kill a dude. Nope. Never once. No. Nope. She does have issues. Oh yes, and and yes, she would fit in an er- an erotic thriller, but that's not what this movie is. Right. This movie is 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 broken hearts, unrequited love, searching for the thing that that you want more than anything else. That's and, what and, this movie is and about. Living with guilt, living with guilt, living with uh, consternation about mm-hmm. what happened mm-hmm. that led to certain things, being lost, you mm-hmm. know, finding your way back, and stuff like that. That's yeah. what this movie is about. So, yeah it's gooder it's gooder it's gooder all right so, Jeff. uh yeah so next week uh we we enter into april and with april comes april the Fools? devil's reign <laughs> i i was super excited yeah we're about to watch this actually yeah and i'm excited because i think it's gonna be bonkers it's surprisingly pretty straightforward. Have you seen it? I've seen this movie oh, a few times. It. I've seen first, this movie several times. It's the first time watch for me. Yeah. So that's a William Shatner, Ernest Borgnine, uh, uh, Tom Skerritt movie. Oh, Tom Skerritt, huh? Yeah. All right. Tom Skerritt. All right. Uh, and uh, and young uh, John Travolta, Johnny Travolta. Oh, wow. It's yeah. going to be something else. It's going to be something else. So, uh, yeah. So check back next week for that. You can always uh, find new episodes of Film Seizure on uh, filmseizure.com. That's kind of our home base. Yeah. Um, you can also hit us up on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. That's at Film Seizure. Um, you can email us at filmseizure at gmail.com. Uh, episodes can be found in several places, uh, places like uh, the YouTubes or um, the, the Google Play Music Podcast, whatever it's called. Um, the uh, the, the um, iTunes, 
what else? Uh, what else we got? We got uh, TuneIn and uh, uh, Spotify. That's the one I'm yep. trying to think of. Uh, so, yeah, you can subscribe to us there. You can get a beam directly into your ear face. Into your ear face, yes. That's, that's exactly right. what we're going to do. Cool. So, uh, until next week, I am Jeff Arbuckle. I am Jeff Arbuckle. <gasps> oh, no. <gasps> oh, no. You're going to try to sleep with a lady who likes me but wants, doesn't know where I went. And you have been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs> <laughs>